Using template literals is a pretty common thing to use to concatenate strings, right? But did you know that you could also use these template literals as a TypeScript type? In this video, I'm going to give you the reason why this type here is a valid type and what the actual use cases of this type is. Also, I'm going to give you a comprehensive overview of all the utility types around this template literal. If you're new here, my name is Flo. I'm a professional software engineer. And on this channel, we cover all the topics related to the software engineering world. So without further ado, let's quickly jump into the fun stuff. So let's quickly discover the template literal in JavaScript itself. So as you might know, we can just declare a number, for instance, and assign the value 13, and then we can declare a string and directly concatenate this number into a string using a template literal. So we can just say this is a number and then use this JavaScript magic here to concatenate this string. Now next to the template literal type in TypeScript, we also have the string literal. Now what I mean by that is that we can basically use a string as a fixed type. So we could use, if we just remove this here, we can say const str and then define the type as a fixed string. So we can, for instance, say this here, and we cannot obviously change this value to age, for instance. So that's how we can use string literal types in TypeScript. And obviously we can extend this type to, for instance, a union. But obviously these types are not really expressive. Right? They are not really complex. However, we can make use of template literals in TypeScript to make this type even more complex. So let's get into the first use case, which is a pretty basic one. We just want to develop a simple API and we can enhance this API by using our template literal. So for instance, we have our type, which is a union of HTTP methods. I just have here the four most common HTTP methods used in an API. Additionally, we could also to declare for instance the resource name as a union of strings and then let's just say we want an api endpoint type which is in the following form so we want the http method first which could be for instance get post put or delete then we want to define the endpoint starting with slash api and then we want the resource name so an example would be get API users to basically retrieve all our users of the API. So you might ask yourself, how can we generate or create a basic type that reflects this logic here? And like I said in the beginning, we can use a template literal here. So what we can do is just declare an API endpoint type. And this type has two generic parameters where the first one is basically the method and the second one is the resource name. And then here as the type, we can declare the template literal. And in here we use now our method, which is basically the method name. So get post, put or delete. Then we declare API and then we make use of our resource generic parameter. And this here looks kind of strange, right? Because we use something from JavaScript inside of TypeScript, but this is actually a valid type. So now we constructed a generic API endpoint, which actually makes use of the method, so the HTTP method, and then the API path, and then the resource. After that, we could, for instance, just say type get users endpoint, and then we make use of that API endpoint type. So we use here the API endpoint, then as the method name, we declare get. And after that, we declare the resource name, which can be users, posts, or comments. Obviously, I use users here. Furthermore, we can also create a union. Now, because I only have one type, it does make a lot of sense. But just for best practices, I'm going to declare this union. So we can name this all endpoints. And then we can simply say get users endpoint. And then let's just say we declare an asynchronous function, which we call fetch data. And then we have here the endpoint as a parameter, which can expect all endpoints, which is a type. And this returns a promise of any. Now, obviously, this is not best practice, but this is just an example. And after that, we can make use of this fetch data. So for that, we just for now declare get users endpoint here. And now we actually experience the magic of our template literal here. So we just make a string and then we get the following recommendation. Now, because we only have to get users endpoint declared as a type, we only get this recommendation. Obviously, if we declared all other endpoints as well for our API, we get multiple recommendations we could use here. So let's just use this as an example. And then let's just say, 
I have get with a lowercase e. And now we actually see the magic here because now TypeScript prints out an error that basically this is not a valid type. So it's not assignable to our endpoint type. Same for our resource name. So if we say user, obviously this does not work as well because it is not a valid type. And now we can make use of the fetch data function to basically just fetch our data based on this endpoint here. And this was our first use case of the template literals. So let's quickly jump into this second template literal example where we are actually going to define the type of CSS classes. Now this is pretty interesting. Now I've copied here just the example. I'm not going to live code this to save some extra time. But what we did is basically the same thing we used to do in our first use case. We just declared two types, which is the button size and variant. Then we have the generic button class name, which takes in two parameters, the size and the variant, which both extend the corresponding type. And then we make use of the template literal, where we say btn dash, then the generic parameter size, and then dash the parameter variant. After that, we've declared a function, which is apply button class. And in this apply button class, we expect also two types, two generic types, which is the size and the variant. And in this function, we basically manipulate the class name. Now, the funny thing is we make use of the button class name, which basically is typed in this case. So for instance, if I now change BTN to, for instance, ABC, this actually gives us an error because this is not a valid type anymore based on our button class name type definition. And this is, I think, pretty straightforward if you just understand the first use case. So now let's quickly jump into the utility types we can use with all sorts of strings in our TypeScript project. Now let's just quickly look at this example here, which makes use of the uppercase utility type. Now in here, we've declared an API path to constant. Now this use case for this type is here basically that it makes all the letters in our generic path parameter to uppercase letters. Now we can see the actual action here in the user's path type. So what we did is just make use of the API path to constant then specify the slash users API path. And what it does is transforming all the lowercase letters to uppercase letters. So we just have now a slash uppercase letter users API path. Now this is a pretty nice example here. And obviously there are three other utility types we can use. So let's just imagine we make use of some sort of library or dependency that has the HTTP methods declared as uppercase. And obviously we do not want to repeat ourselves. So we can make use of the lowercase utility type here. And what this does is pretty straightforward. It just transforms the strings to lowercase letters. So what we now have here is our lowercase HTTP method, which can be get, post, put and delete, but in this case, in lowercase letters instead of in uppercase letters. So the lowercase utility type is basically transforming all the uppercase letters to lowercase letters. So the next example is pretty straightforward as well, which just is capitalized in this case. And all it does is just capitalizing the first letter of a string. So for instance, we just have here button, input and select as our component names. But now we want to use this component in our code with uppercase letters. <laughs> what we could do is just use the capitalized utility type here and then use this type. And what we receive here is the typical union, but now with a capitalized letter in the beginning. And obviously, I think I don't need to explain this anymore. We have the same thing with uncapitalized, which just makes the capitalized letter of a string lowercase. Now, understanding these types is essential for enhancing your TypeScript project. If you want to learn more about a powerful combination we can use in our TypeScript project, then feel free to check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.